Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the November 20th uh, special meeting of the Daytona Beach Community Redevelopment Agency. We're happy to have you with us this evening. We apologize for the delay in the start of the meeting. Uh, we had a special meeting downstairs. At this time, Ms. LaMagna will review the procedures for tonight's meeting. Good evening. Agendas are available in front of the room on the table to my right. All exhibits pertaining to the items on the agenda are posted on the bulletin board. Feel free to view the exhibits at any time during tonight's meeting. You are required to fill out a blue form to speak before the Community Redevelopment Agency. The blue forms are located next to my assistant, Sandy Francis. You must complete the sections that ask for your name, address, topic of concern, agenda item number, signature, and date. The form must be completed and placed in the designated box next to my assistant. You will not be allowed to speak if your form is not placed in the box. Item number 6A is your opportunity to address the Community Redevelopment Agency concerning any item on tonight's agenda that is not scheduled as a public hearing, where you may address the CRA on any issue that is not on the agenda. Resolutions under administrative items number 7 are open for public comment, and you may fill out a blue form to speak when that item is called. All citizens completing a blue form will be allowed to speak for two minutes. When you approach the lectern, please speak clearly into the microphone and give your full name and address. The two-minute clock on the monitor above and directly in front of you will start running when you begin to speak. Pay attention to your time. You will be told when your time has expired. All conversation must take place either at the lectern or on the dais so that everyone can hear the business being discussed tonight. Ms. LaMagna, may we have a roll call, please? Commissioner Henry? Here. Commissioner Reed? Here. Commissioner Lenz? Here. Commissioner Woods? Here. Commissioner White? Here. Commissioner Gilliland? Here. Mayor Derrick Henry? Here. Uh, we will now have the invocation led by Commissioner Reed, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance led by Commissioner Henry. Please rise for the invocation and pledge. Let us bow our heads. Lord, we thank you for this day. We give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. We continue to lift up the city before you, Lord God, and ask that you would continue to bless us, continue to put a hedge of protection around us, and continue to guide those of us that are the policy makers and decision makers so that we would do your will. In Jesus' name I pray. Let us all say. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We will now move on to item number four, the approval of the minutes of the September 18th, 2013 regular meeting of the Community Redevelopment Agency. Second. I have a motion by Commissioner Gilliland, second by Commissioner Woods. Uh, do we have questions or corrections to the minutes? Uh, hearing none, all those in favor, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. Likes not opposed, same sign. Motion carries 7-0. There are no changes to the agenda, Mr. Mayor. Motion to approve the agenda. Second. All right. Uh, no changes. We have a motion and a second to approve the agenda. Uh, all those in favor, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Likes not opposed, same sign. Motion carries 7-0. We will now move on to item six, that is citizen comments. Our first speaker is John Nicholson, and on deck is Stan Colbert. John Nicholson, 413 North Granbury Avenue. Um, one of you guys have been reading the articles in the paper about Beach Street, reno renovation and whatnot. Uh, and the question is, why aren't we doing the same thing for Main Street? Main Street's been ignored for, I guess, the last, what, 20 years? They redid it. I understand A1A's been done. I understand the pier's been done and the boardwalk's been done. But it doesn't help the merchants. It really doesn't. Uh, we are not pushing and we're not getting tourists on the beach side during the slow season whatsoever. That area south of Main Street is dying and really bad. Secondly, it's been now five years and we've never had a project manager. Adding insult to injury, you're taking the funds out of Main Street to pay for the project managers for downtown and for Midtown. If we have to pay for the projects for Midtown and downtown, 
and not have a project manager? One, I, I've said it before, I'll say it again. I believe it's illegal to take the funds from Main Street, the half a million dollars, and dump it into the office and then pay other staff for other areas out of the Main Street budget and adding that we cannot and you will not give us a project manager is something that, that really uh, can't be done. Uh, secondly, um, there's an article in the 80s. I brought it to the City Commission back then. It was in the Atlantic Monthly called Broken Windows. If you have an opportunity to read it, it's a good article asking about the idea that when there, an area has broken windows or is not kept up, then the people then continue to break things and, and do not treat it with respect. So I'm asking you to, uh, when you repair things on the beach side, do it adequately. Repair it to the standard that it was. Uh, it's not being done. It is uh, in deplorable condition. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Our next speaker is Stan Colbert. Good evening. My name is Stan Colbert. They call me the captain. The Salvation Army is around the world in 120 different countries speaking over 150 languages. They have been in Daytona Beach now for 90 years and I moved here four months ago and I'm delighted to be here to be a fellow servant with you. I bring to your attention the downtown streets team. I'm here to say thank you for what you've done, what you're doing, and what you're going to do. The downtown streets team has been in existence now for four years and it is a wonderful program with great success. We've had over 90 individuals come through this program and I uh, like to boast uh, almost a six 60% a success rate, which is to say that these are folks who come to us chronically homeless and then after this program uh, they are gainfully employed and are in permanent housing. So uh, we anticipate breaking over 60% success rate this year. Thank you so much for what you do. I just want to close by saying it was said by our founder in the late 19th century while women, women weep as they do now, I'll fight. While children go hungry as they do now, I'll fight. While men go to prison, in and out, in and out, I'll fight. Where there is yet one soul without the light of God, I'll fight. I'll fight to the very end. That has become a battle cry for those of us who are salvationists. It boils down to heart to God, hand to man. That's what this uniform represents. It's a privilege to serve in this community, and I thank you for what you do. I am grateful being able to stand beside you as a fellow servant, and it is a privilege to keep you in our prayers. God bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kevin. Our final speaker is Samuel Mwenda. Uh, first, I'd like to uh, thank you for hearing my comments. Uh, my name is Samuel Munda, and uh, I'm just here uh, in Daytona observing and meetings and uh, learning from those in development services, uh, learning uh, procedural, procedural things and uh, everything that they have to teach me. And uh, I'm glad to be here. Thank you. And um, Sam. Uh, yes, how long have you been back, and where, where have you been? Uh, I graduated uh, uh, from uh, Mainland on International Speedway, uh, 2008. I have been in Tallahassee, uh, attending Florida State University, majoring in International Affairs and Environmental Studies. Eventually, I want to become an environmental planner, and uh, so I'm just learning from Mr. Walton, Mr. Counts, and everyone in Development Services, and I'm very glad for that. Okay, well, uh, we're glad to have you back and uh, it's good to see a fellow buccaneer representing. Thank you. I appreciate that. Okay. Yeah. That's our final speaker. Moving on to number seven, administrative items. Item number 7A, the Salvation Army Downtown Streets Team Agreement Renewal Resolution. A resolution exercising the option to renew the Downtown Streets Team Funding Agreement for the Salvation Army for a one-year period ending September 30th, 2014 
approving the expenditure of tax increment funds in the amount of $20,000 from the Downtown Redevelopment Area Trust Fund and in the amount of $20,000 from the Main Street Redevelopment Area Trust Fund and providing an effective date. So second. second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, and I do have one speaker, Mr. Mayor, uh, John Nicholson. Okay. John Nicholson, 413 North Granby Avenue. I don't oppose this. I like it. I think it's a great idea. <coughs> but my question is, many of these men have skills. They're plumbers, they're electricians, they're painters, they're landscape people. What I'm asking you is to consider uh, allowing them to use those skills to our advantage. Uh, I just noticed uh, about a week and a half ago, we painted the bathrooms over at the um, uh, Breakers Park. And then one morning, uh, maybe a month ago, you had somebody painting the side uh, boards to the pier up and down um, instead of waiting two years or three years to paint something if this person if we have somebody on the street team that can paint have them paint if you, somebody's an electrician we waited I guess what five years now to fix the lighting on uh, the boardwalk and it still isn't done yet we could have them come out and do that um, so I'm asking you to, to enhance this both for us and for them the old saying is, if you don't use it, you lose it. So if we can help them in, 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 in keeping their skills, and secondly, if we can benefit by it, I think it'd be great. Thank you. Thank you, sir. That's my own speaker. OK. Uh, we have a motion and a second. Do we have any questions or comments from the commission? I was just going to say, I think it's a good program that we've had over the last few years. And um, certainly think it's something we need to continue doing. OK. All right. All right, motion and second. All those in favor, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. Likes not opposed, same sign. A motion carries 7 0. Moving on to item number 7B, it's the South Atlantic Redevelopment Plan Amendment Resolution. A resolution approving amendments to the redevelopment plan for the South Atlantic Redevelopment Area to delete all types of restaurants from the list of desirable and undesirable uses and providing an effective date. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. And I do have speakers, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Glenn Start Storch <laughs> is my first speaker. Sorry about that. <laughs> Hi. For the record, my name is Glenn Storch. Uh, Love from Storch and Harris. Uh, I represent uh, the, the new, ho hopefully, Hard Rock and Bayshore uh, development. Uh, and we're doing the, a PUD in this particular area. Our PUD does allow for the potential for a drive through on that location. Uh, we're looking at a Starbucks uh, that complements what we're doing with the Hard Rock. And I see this as something that will help um, reinvigorate and redevelop the entire west side of A1A. But I have to tell you that I also support my partners uh, in the neighborhood who are asking that although that the idea of the option for this is open, that the, we look at it on a case-by-case -case basis. And you do that by basically saying, that you go through a PUD uh, to say that you're asking for this. And that way, every individual um, uh, potential uh, use could be looked at on that location to make sure that you mitigate uh, the impact of the neighborhood, such as buffers, vegetation, et cetera. And so I, I'm fine with that. And that works for us. We're doing that. And uh, I hopefully will be able to continue to be good neighbors. Okay, so thank you, sir. And I have John Nicholson. John Nicholson, 413 North Granby Avenue. Yeah, uh, Dan Harshar came to the Main Street uh, Redevelopment <coughs> Board and basically said the same thing. Uh, years ago, we went through this uh, oceanfront standards on building and height limits. We determined that the wider the property, the higher the, you could go. And it was determined there could be two properties in which there could be very, very tall buildings. So it was passed. <coughs> two years later, the county goes through and vacates streets along the ocean. Therefore, instead of having two high-rises, we end up with seven high-rises. The same thing can happen here. I know we want Starbucks. I think it's a great, it's, it's, it's one of those upper echelon things that uh, is great for a community. But they are worried about once you open Pandora's box, from Starbucks to south of Silver Beach, 
then that area then can be open to uh, drive-throughs as well. So if there's a way of limiting it, as, as Glenn said, they're, they're not opposed to it, I think it would be great for the neighbors. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Uh, <coughs> Mr. Woods. Mr. Berger. Mr. Okay. Yes, Mr. The reason that they were not allowed in the first place is because, I mean. The restaurants you, in the yes, past? why they were not a permitted use was it. I mean, can you tell well, me why? There was I, mean, a, I know what I'm thinking, but I'd like to know if you can give me some Well, there was an, there back in, in the early 2000s uh, when there was the creation of this plan, uh, that's when the issues were coming up about what can we do to redevelop this area. At that time, you had some of the, the fast food restaurants that were there. I believe there was a McDonald's mm -hmm. in the area, and that was sort of a, a focus of of uh, it, it, it didn't seem to be well managed, it, uh, and so there were some problems with them at that time, and there was concerns that, that this might be coming back, and we're going to have the same thing again. Okay. So, so that's why it was a prohibited. That, that's why it, it it was at that time put on the on the list. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. So it wasn't well maintained. Is it well managed? Well, it, it you know things happen with with the blowing of the uh, wrappers or whatever it might be uh, that are they're coming out of there, and, and it was just an older uh, one of your older restaurants um, in that area. Okay. And I think that's a problem that you're going to. I mean, that again, living on the beach side in a neighborhood that has the west side of A1A issues up where we are, we're north of the area you're talking about, but the issues are the same. Mm -hmm. You have narrow lots on the west side of A1A. So if you're going to do buffers or anything to mitigate the impact to the neighborhood, it's going to be very challenging. And that's part of the, the reason probably why some of that was in there as well. You've got to deal with all the issues that are added into putting in a drive through so, I mean, I'm just going to say for you, it continues to be a, a concern for me in that far, you know, south of ISB. It's all residential on the west side of A1A. It's not commercial over there once you get one block off or one lot off. So, but I mean, I want you all to understand what the thinking was back then and some of the problems that existed, which could still exist tomorrow. Okay. And, and I'd like to add, if, if I may, um, I, I attended a lot of the South Atlantic Neighborhood Association meetings, um, and that neighborhood backs up directly to this this side of A1A, and, and they didn't meet a whole lot of resistance. And I think one of the one of the main issues was similar to what we did with the Sunoco at the corner of Silver Beach and A1A. That went through a very rigorous trial with with the residents and um, and through the redevelopment board and the and the planning board. They actually revised their plan substantially to accommodate the residents. And at the end of the day, you know because this will be required to be a planned development we will we will be able to confer with the residents and make sure that that they're happy with any future development plans for these types of restaurants so um, that being said I, I I don't have any resistance to this based on the comments from the majority of residents in that neighborhood I need clarification yeah. then can we go in and say a specific use has to go through the planned development process or not we can okay. I mean if so we're, we can it, what we can do is we what you have before you really opens it up to significant parts of, of the west side of A1A and, and ISB. So um, you could narrow this down. Um, we, we could tonight um, uh, recommend tightening it up to where it's just uh, for approved PDs. Um, and you could, you could go further than that and say just, just for the west side and not even address uh, ISB right now. So. Well, if that's what you, uh, I don't know what it, uh, what the uh, pleasure of uh, the others are, but it seems to me as though it is it is important to uh, protect the integrity of the neighborhood uh, so that they don't have uh, a long-term risk that we wouldn't be able to protect them of in the future. Uh, yeah, that's my concern. That's why I want Marie, yeah, if you the, can. The proposal that's in front of you tonight is simply to remove the references two restaurants, the undesirable I get versus that. desirable, okay. from the plan. The and right. to leave mm -hmm. this, yes, and to leave the issue um, to be regulated by the Land Development Code. So we currently have a provision in the Land Development Code that says that the A2, A2 and, and A3 restaurants mm -hmm. are prohibited uses in the South Atlantic. Um, and I think that by... Um, we can look at that land development code provision and and adjust it you know to to say 
Um, they're prohibited uh, in the South Atlantic area, except as a plan development or, or you know, what, whatever you might like to do, but regulate it in the, in the land development code versus in the redevelopment plan. And I get that and I understand that. I mean, I know what we're voting on tonight, but I wanted it clear to us that we can move forward and make sure we regulate it because I'm not supporting opening up just the uses in general. I don't at all. So I would only vote for this with the understanding that, that we would go through and make that change in the land development code, that the only way they would be permitted would be as a plan development. <coughs> if, and so we'd need to move that forward then once we change this. All right, so I'd like to know that before I vote that we can actually do that. Yes, yes, you can do that. And the, um, you know, the, if you if you only make this change and don't change the land development code, they're still prohibited. Okay. So that has to come to you to to change the land development code. Well, that's good for me. Yeah, I would say when okay. you bring, I mean, I I would agree um, that it's worth opening it up but with some mm -hmm. regulations or the ability to, to control it because they're such shallow lots that it's a double-edged sword they've been hard to develop so certain types of drive-throughs may actually work very well there mm -hmm. um, and yet because they are so shallow they are very close to a different use which is residential so I don't know that I mean I would say to just go ahead and bring it forward to mm -hmm. us with the PD kind of clause in there about the A2 and A3 that would be my my position on it Okay. We can do that. We can make that change. Okay. All right. So we're, we're, we have a motion and a second. Mm -hmm. All right. All those in favor, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Likes not opposed, same sign. A motion Thank carries 7-0. Uh, Moving on to item number eight, it's comments and inquiries from the Community Redevelopment Agency, the city manager, and the city attorney. Okay. Uh, do you have any Starts with you, Commissioner Henry. No. Commissioner no. Reed. No, thank you. No, no, sir. Okay. Uh, with that said, um, this meeting is adjourned. We will commence with our regularly scheduled city commission meeting in three minutes. <laughs>